time. Let me make sure we're getting transmission here, folks. Yeah, 11 seconds, 12 seconds. Okay, we're recording. Okay, I'm going to show y'all what a basic, good multimeter uh, bow, I, I just call them bolt meters because that's what I use them for. You know, I don't use them for bench testing or whatever, although I could even with the one I have. But this is part one to educate anyone and all of you that are watching my videos. This is part one of what is three videos. Now, part three video will be online no later than Saturday of this week. And, um, or no, actually, that, yeah, part three, correct. No later than Saturday of this week. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you an alternator, your basic, as of today, what would be 1992 to present day alternator and uh, for a V8 engine. Okay. And of course even the four cylinder engine, you know, they have an alternator with an output, you know, a healthy one that's proper 14.5 volts with the engine running is what they should put out. Okay. But although you can, if you have an alternator with an output of 13 volts, Go ahead and clean the wire from the battery to the alternator and make sure the uh, connections are connected tight and uh, accurate and check your battery terminal. But if you're charging as much as 13 volts, uh, don't worry about it. You're going to be alright with 13 volts, but any less than 13 volts, change the alternator. Change it, people. Don't keep playing with it or whatever. Don't play around with, you know, the external uh, voltage regulator. Which some are bolted on the back like this alternator I'm fixing to show y'all. You know, which is for Mopar products and probably a lot of other vehicles. It's similar pretty much other than the mounting, you know, uh, of the Ford 4.6 and 5.4. Ford V8 alternator, it's pretty much the same thing, you know, but, um, let's go over some things right now, you have a car, you got to get in it, and it's just like, click, 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 or you get in your car, and it goes, uh, 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 and you're cussing, because you have to go to work for something you want to do, <laughs> and you're mad at your car. Well, don't get mad at your car because you'll only cause more problems for the car and for yourself if you get angry, okay? In anything in life, stay calm because your logical mind functions better when you're not with excess emotions such as anger, fear, paranoia, you know, your logical part of your mind will work better, you know. All good mechanics that I've known, and master mechanics like myself, with many years experience, I'm age 67. You know how the, what we have learned is that you take your time and uh, you got to know how to look at something, how to look at something. Like a man he couldn't figure out how to get his turn signals to work, you know, um, and his brake lights and headlights to work right on a 93 electric guide Harley. And I told him, I said, brother, it's the way you're looking at it. Think outside of the box. Think of it as a bicycle that has a motor in it. And if you think of it like that, and then realize the Fonda guy that rode the panhead chopper in the movie Easy Rider in 69, it had all the wiring to run that same Harley and also had brake lights, headlights, tail lights, or whatever on it. You see? 
I said, uh, and it's no more advanced than a 1949 Chevrolet or a 1940. You know, after I got him to start thinking in that way, he started forgetting about tech <coughs> Harley videos on the internet, and he started thinking outside the box in a natural way. This guy did a beauty. He did a beautiful job. We're not speaking now because of an indifference, but uh, he did a, a great job because, see, he climbed outside of the box and he quit making it a complex nightmare. I said, think of it as a bicycle with a motor in it and you'll be all right. But think of it as a 49 Chevrolet or a 49 board. There you go. See, it's a state of mind, people. It's a state of mind. You know, and imagine, to see things for what they are, not what other people blow things out of proportion to be, but see things for what they naturally, absolutely, mechanically are. Okay, um, a boat meter. Okay, people, but this type boat meter, oh, right here, I'm hoping you can see it. You know, it's, uh, well, I don't know, length of about five inches. People, you can get these for $9 off of eBay. And um, I've got, I ordered another one because I think after what is eight years, this one has a slight malfunction in it. It's still good. I love it, but I think it's got a slight malfunction. Because, um, Okay, I went to start my 98 Dodge Ram uh, truck, oh, it's been about three days ago, and I usually start it once a week because I'm not using it right now. It's a backup vehicle. It runs very good. I keep all my vehicles up. I don't have anything with stockpile uh, problems. I keep all my vehicles in good running order, insured and registered and safety inspections on record. And um, I, I got a partial crank, like, uh, and then after that, click, 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 click. Okay, I knew I had a ye old dead battery. So I opened the hood and uh, I checked my terminals. They look nice because I keep that stuff nice like that. And then, um, you know, check the alternator wire that goes to the um, alternator, back of the alternator, to the positive terminal on the battery. Check the connection is. Yeah, looking good, looking a-okay. Alright, now, okay, I'm trying to think here. You know, I've got three cats here, and, you know, I'm trying to juggle, take care of, they constantly jump on me up here by the computer. Their mother, Mother Pampers Roll, was murdered by two large dogs two months ago. So I'm filling in and taking care of these beautiful cats. But right now, until I resolve an issue with loose dogs outside, I'm having to keep them in against their will. And they get bored, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so, so much for that. Down, down, down. Okay. But anyway, uh, my part two video, what it's going to be, if uh, my $9 volt meter comes in that I ordered off of eBay, and it's the same as this, not the same brand, but the same height, same length, same functions on it. Uh, I'm just going to do an unboxing on it and show where you connect, you know, your pin connectors that are on the front of it. You know, I'm going to have that illustrated. And uh, it's not going to stop there. From there, I'm going to go outside and do a hands-on for y'all. I'm going to, uh, on two vehicles, on the 98 Dodge Ram, I'm going to uh, check the battery before I start it. Okay, it should still have 12 volts in it, which it probably will tomorrow or even Saturday. Okay, and then I'm going to start it. And then I'm going to check what voltage feed I'm getting from my alternator, which should be 14.5. And um, I know that it's putting out 14.5 volts, and I'll tell you why. 
it has the needle gauge it's a 98 dollar dram the needle gauge on the instrument cluster uh, to where it shows the actual numbers like zero volts uh, 10 volts 20 30 40 volts or, or no 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 14 wait wait 5 10 15 20 30 no 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 I'm doing it wrong again but it has zero and then 5 10 and then 14 yeah that's a, that's how they got it set up and it's running right at 14 and a little further and I know that that inside gauge is perfectly accurate because a rebuilt alternator I had had on it about four years ago it was slightly under the 14 and all that alternator ever put out was 13.5 volts it sufficed it did good but the reason I took it off and I put the original back on is because the diode went bad on it to where I finally I had a parasitic draw to where it put out a good charge 13.5 volts but the, when the truck would sit, the battery would be pulled completely down. And I found out the parasitic draw was coming from the diode on the alternator. So that's something you should always check, people. Usually that doesn't happen, but it does happen. I've had that happen to me two times in my life. A diode would be bad on an alternator. You know, you can get an AutoZone store to test that for you. They can tell you if an alternator, a diode, is bad on an alternator. But, uh, you know, here are, you know, the fundamentals of how to check a battery. You know, uh, like, if you can't get a vehicle to crank or start, I mean, because it just turns over too slow, put a charge on the battery. And then when you get the vehicle to where it can start, one of these eight to ten dollar, I call them volt meters. They're on the internet. They're called multimeters because they have multiple functions. Put uh, these, the red terminal or the red pin, on the positive cable, and the black one on the ground. And you should be putting out fourteen point five volts. If you're putting out 13 volts, that's still going to be enough to keep a battery charged in a vehicle. So you're A-OK, -okay. you know, but if you're only 13 volts, which is the minimum, you know, allowances, make sure those terminals and that wire that goes from the battery to the alternator, make sure that damn thing is clean and the connection is good and secured, okay? But uh, those are ground realities, you know, for these things. And uh, the way to tell if a battery is uh, it's just not good anymore, uh, put a charge on it. Charge it up to at least 12.5 volts. All right, disconnect your ground cable. Then let it set overnight. And then take this, a voltmeter, multimeter like this, and if that has drained down, I would say in 12 hours time, if it has drained down from 12.5 to let's say 12.2, there's a problem. The battery's getting tired. Now here's how 12 volt batteries are. A 12 volt battery, you have six cells. Each cell is two and one eight volts. Two and one eight volts. And the full capacity actually for any 12 volt battery is 13.65 volts. 13.65. That means 13.650. But generally you will never get that read. Uh, a good battery, if it's at 12.4, that's a healthy battery, it's a good battery. You don't have to worry. But, uh, you know, because they don't keep the full charge, and I'll tell you why. Because the alternators and vehicles are made to where they never fully charge a battery to that 13.65 volts. 
The reason why is because of danger of the battery being overcharged, which will destroy the battery. You see? And the battery gets hot, it can actually destroy the regulator on the alternator. That's why they build those that way. So what you're after, uh, put a charger on one, get 12.5 volts in that battery, okay? And then crank that engine up, you know, and, um, you know, I say this, people that live in apartments, your life is hell. <laughs> because how would a person in an apartment get an extension cord or, you know, well, you could buy one of those new battery jumpers, you know, like, um, oh, roadside services use. It's a car jumper with a handle on it, like a briefcase. But shit, man, the money. They want the, the money. <coughs> shit, man. That's too much money to pay for that stuff. So I don't know what to tell anybody else. I guess y'all are stuck with the mechanic or the garage or whatever have you if you live in an apartment. But um, I've always, ever since I was a teenage boy, I have always had a battery charger. Because there is nothing worse than a damn car that won't start. <laughs> because what is it? A car that won't start suddenly becomes a lot of dead weight. And you can't push a car around, you know? <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. But uh, if you're putting out at least 13 volts, not any less, but at least 13 volts, don't worry, you're okay. Make sure your connections are good between the alternator and the battery and both the battery positive terminal and the ground terminal on the battery. Make sure those are clean and they're tight, okay? Your connections have to be good. And... Um, from there, let's see, I'm going to show y'all an alternator. Now, here's what happened to me on my 98 Dodge Ram. Uh, it had a lot of mileage, 180,000 miles. So about four years ago, one day I was thinking, you know, that alternator should be getting tired by now. But it was still working fine. So I went ahead, I went to AutoZone. They had them for a good price, $49.95. And I didn't exchange my old alternator. Always keep those. Always keep them. You know, I mean, in my case. You know, because I'd rather rebuild that stuff and save it. Instead of giving it to those SOBs, you know, scoundrel crooks. Now, I figured I'll just change it because of time. Because I want dependability. Where I get in a car, there's a hurricane or an apocalypse. I want to get in, I don't want to break down, I want it to go and be and be good, you know? A good battery, good alternator, good starter, you know, everything be A-OK. -okay. So I just went ahead and changed it, and I saved the old one, because after I took it out, I checked for in and out play on the bearings, up and down play, there was none, and then I spun it. The brushes still had a good grip on the commutator, on the armature. I figured, hell, I'm saving this because it worked good anyway. But uh, lo and behold, oh man, you know, recently the diode went bad on it. So I thought, ah, so I took it on off there and uh, I put the original that had been on there that worked good. <laughs> oh boy, now the reason I ordered another uh, multimeter voltmeter is because this one I don't know what's going on but it's off one volt uh, it's the ground pin for the ground uh, see where you at buddy it broke off and I had to take the pin and wrap it around the wire on the end and put black tight uh, which is a good repair but I think she's off by one volt because it shows that my alternator is only charging 12.5 volts on my Dodge Ram and that the battery will only take 11.9 volts after I put the charge. 
But then on my Ford truck, it shows I'm only getting 13.5 volts and the same story on the 11.9 volts on a charged battery. And I found out by playing with this last night, wiggling it around, it started giving me the right feed, the right figures. Uh, I'd wiggle these pins back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I started getting the proper figures on the uh, Dodge Ram. I started getting uh, 13.8, which is good. And then I started seeing on the battery fully charged a 12.6. And then on the Ford, I noticed instead of saying 13.5, it said 14.5. And the battery on it said uh, 12.9 volts. And I'm like, oh, the voltmeter's off one volt. So that's why I went ahead and ordered another one. Okay? Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the unboxing or unpackaging for the new one that might be here tomorrow or Saturday at the latest. And then after that, I'm gonna take my outdoor camera and I'm gonna do a hands-on for you people, a hands-on how to check that alternator wire, your battery terminals, how to check your battery voltage, and then I'm going to start my Dodge Ram up, and I'm going to show y'all how much feed you should be getting from your alternator. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my Ford truck, and show y'all how this is done and how it works, okay? So remember, this video it will be titled the same, but it will be listed, or if the title's even a little different, it's going to be uh, part two and part three. The part three will be the hands-on demonstration. The reason I don't do that one, the hands-on demonstration part three, uh, in part two is because I'm using my cam quarter on my laptop computer as to where the hands-on will be done with an outdoor camera. That's the reason for that. But this is very valuable information. Okay, let me show y'all that alternator real quick. Uh, oh, heavy son of a gun. Y'all still got the new box that came in. All right, here she is. Boy, this little shit's heavy, I tell you what. It is heavy. Okay. There she is. Boy, she's heavy. It shows on the back. Okay, you got uh, three connections. One right here has a plug. That goes to your gauge inside the vehicle. And then, of course, back here, see, you've got two your regulator bolts into that and your direct connection and your ground. See, and then over here, this is for your gauge, see, that goes in your uh, cab or whatever. Oh man, this feels good. No ply, no up and down ply, so it's in good condition. It's just that cheek and shit diode. I might brass a diode for it and install in it. Might do that, you know. Okay, so who wants to loan me a million dollars? Uh, anyone out there loan me a million dollars uh, for my looks? Well, anyway, I hope you're all doing great. And I love you, Jesus Christ, and I hope for all my brothers and sisters, things can be good for them if they choose to do right. But uh, people, you know, I mean, um, I, I hope I'm able to help you here. And don't forget to watch part two of, um, let me select my minute, 24 minutes. Uh, be sure to check part two and part three. Oh, and to, to you Harley guys, I'm also going to show, like if you'll put a pigtail for a battery tender on your Harley Davidson, 
you can check with a voltmeter. You can take those pins and put in those two holes, you know, on your pigtail. And you can see how much volts is in your battery from the outside of the bike. Plus, you can crank it up and see how many uh, volts your stator and your rover is putting out. You know, I can also demonstrate that for you and show y'all how to do that. You know, just make sure anybody that has a Harley, man, buy a battery tender that has the pigtail that goes to the uh, battery. Have that. You know, it's stupid not to have it. But anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Da da da. Da 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 da.